All right, so this is what we will be finishing today. This is the finished product. Looks like this on the bottom. Okay. And let's see how we get to that point. So today we doorstop. Uh, this is the Stark Art Harbor Master doorstop. I thought this one would be better because it has different size roofs and shapes um, instead of uh, the lobster trap, uh, lobster shack, because it's pretty symmetrical and. So here we go. Let's jump in. I'm going to, even though this is my design and I have the original kind of template, I'm doing it exactly the way you would want to do it as far as measuring it out and everything. Because, um, you know, when I get pieces in, you know, uh, I try to make sure when I design these to add, you know, a couple stitches so that when I turn it over, and when you turn it over, this might be a little bit longer. So we have to kind of, uh, there's some tricks that I do for the ends. Uh, sometimes you don't know if somebody overstitched this because they wanted to continue a pattern. So you just gotta make sure, well, if you're doing somebody else's work, if not, you know this, what you did to it. <laughs> so um, the first thing that we start with is it's easiest just to measure this area for knowing your width. But also when you look down here, this front panel is going to start here. Let's make sure, yeah. So we're, you want to make sure that this can encapsulate the mat board that you're going to be putting underneath this. Uh, and when I say that, you must wrap, make sure that each side, you don't lose this first row of stitches. You're making it so that it wraps around the board and this row will be the face and the waist canvas is really tucked under. So you want to make sure that there's plenty of room to tuck. So see how I like to make the board two stitches in about and it's not really five eighths and it's not really three quarters it's kind of in between um, but we're going to cut it just shy of the two and three quarters so I'm going to write this out that long roof is going to be, and sides will be two and three quarters by. Now this is where we're not gonna make our, oops, you can't see that. We are not going to make our uh, board for here go all the way to the end okay I'm gonna leave a quarter inch play at the top because of that whole we don't know how long it's really gonna be and when you once all the boards are in and you turn it and you start to pin it together it might be longer and you might need to so we wait to glue this top edge down uh, to make sure and sometimes, actually did this yesterday, when I went to turn it over, the board that I had given plenty of gap at the top that I thought, ugh, I still had to go in and cut it. And now the board was all the way glued in. And I had to, I didn't want to disassemble all of it, take it out to cut it. So I have a trick for that too, um, where you slide a piece of mat board in. I'll show you that later. So we're going to do six and three quarters long. Now, we're gonna measure 
this roof out. Again, we're going up two stitches from the bottom. So we're going to do this three eighths. Uh, eight and three eighths. Um, we want, as this bends, we want the bend. We kind of want to make sure that these butt up against each other. So when everything is bent around, folded around, it makes it really taut. And it makes it, it pulls against it, so it keeps it nice and stretched. Um, and if any areas pucker, it'll usually be here and here. But just in case, there are other tricks we can use if you find that there's any bowing. So I'm going to tell you how to get rid of that uh, when we approach that. So we know that this is going to be two and three quarters for the side. And this side is going to be uh, ten and three quarters. And ten and three quarters. And again, this is just going to be the two and three quarters. The top is going to be the top is going to be kind of harder this time because it's such a big project. Uh, so let's do three and one eighth. Then we measure from here down this stitch. And I'm going to make that seven and three quarters wide. And piece is going to be long ruler out. Middle piece is going to be at least. Twelve and a half. Oops. Started writing short roof. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to cut all of these pieces and then I will uh, go ahead and I'm not going to make you sit here while I cut it. So I'll be right back. All right, we got all of our mat board cut. So next we're going to cut away. And wherever there is a point of wall that's going to turn, we're going to put a dart. Again, as I do with everything, it's a half. An inch approximately. Get rid of 
some of this extra. Okay. Now, typically, I would, um, oh, let's go through here. We know it's going to have a hinge point here because this is where the roof folds. And we can follow this down, so we know, approximately here. We're going to have another one. We have to put these darts in because we're going to put these pieces of mat board in. And approximately here, might have to change that out a little. Ugh, it's so big that. Now, typically, what I do with pieces, if you've watched a few of my videos is I always steam back the edges. For this particular one I'm not going to because um, when I blocked this piece um, because it wasn't as with many of the things that I do it was not done on a frame. And so it had shifted a lot and I had to shift it back. And I'm afraid, I mean, just with a little bit of humidity we have here right now on Cape, it's kind of started to ship back, shift back again. We'll be okay because we are going to be using square pieces in here and we'll get it all squared up again, nice and even. So um, if this was a, pillow, I would have to um, put it back on the block, block it out, because it's soft. Oof, I made myself nuts with those scissors. And if it shifted, and so sometimes 13 is a little more difficult to get to stay, but also uh, the type of fiber that used can be um, a little problematic. I am not gonna cut way up in that dart because when I fold this over, um, I'll be able to just push that in. You'll see. Actually, I lied. I'm going to, right to there. And the reason is I have to the one part that I do have to turn over is this roof because we have to get the roof line the same way we get a shaped ornament. Um, you know, I designed this piece. It is part of the Stark Art line. Um, but I'm doing this as if I was you. Uh, so and like I said in the beginning, um, I don't always know if somebody has uh, overstitched. Just a couple of stitches uh, to finish out a pattern, or you know, you just you never know. And I can't tell by the back because they've covered up all the painted area. And this is such a sweet little uh, stand up when it's against a door. It's very, it's very cute. So um, this is actually the building that is uh, in the Plymouth, Massachusetts Harbor. And uh, so that's why I made this design. It's a local place for me. 
I mean, it's right near my favorite pizza place. Okay, so. All right, and I totally didn't dark this corner. <laughs> So it makes it quite difficult to follow the design on the back um, because they did a beautiful job with the basket weave. And so we're going to turn this over. Okay. Now, I can tell because of this line, I know that the wall piece over here, which is the long wall, the beveled side faces in because we want as little space on the edge and we want the, out, the exterior walls to be nice and sharp. So that goes there, that goes there, perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this piece, I'm going to take a little bit off of this so that it doesn't get too bulky behind the board. Okay. All right. And I can also see my edge as I'm gluing it on. Okay, and I'm going to use this as my straight edge. Boy, that corner looks pretty, it actually all looks pretty square. Okay, and I'm going to fold these up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just go straight across as we're doing. Do it on the corners as well on this side. All right, and we're pushing all of that up so it at least somewhat stands up, okay? Is halfway there, whatever you want to say. It's a little memory. Spin this around. Just going to go ahead and get all of that folding over done. Okay. And like I said earlier, um, I like to leave a little gap up here, and I'll probably tack this very close to the edge um, just so I can make sure everything is square and then I can just pop it back off. Okay, and I'm rolling that right up. Right, and you go ahead and do that. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to wait to do this until I get everybody else stabilized, uh, not bring the steam around. Okay, so I'm doing this. I just want to make sure now that that's folded up. Okay, so I'm gonna go here. 
can see that this corner, I need to bring it in a little like that, and I glue there. Uh, because I'm going, going to probably be pulling on this a little, stretching it over this frame, as you, for lack of a better word. I'm going to put a little extra glue on it. And as you can see, I pull it so that you don't see any waste canvas. All right, now I'm going to push against this and pull there. Okay. Going to shove my tiny glue stick in there. Yes, I do see that this is bowing, but that's okay. I want it to be squared, and it will be. Try it all so I don't burn my fingers off. Up on there, up on there, up, 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 get that rolled right over, okay, okay, that's good, okay, there, okay, all right, now, Go ahead and where's my tiny roof piece? There it does. Now let's see if the nope. So the roof pieces because they both go around and they're not going to have this center piece to butt up against. I need to make them thinner than the two and three quarters that I did. Alright, so I'm going to shave an eighth off. Okay, um, the uh, actually the um, the fibers being thicker because they're basket weave. Uh, that is another reason why we need to do that. It takes up more room. I'm still going to do it like that. And I got to take a note off of this. I overcut that one a lot originally. Okay. Okay, bevel, bevel. On this type of thing, I don't know that it really makes that much of a difference. Let's flip it around. Oh, yeah. Much better, much, much better. All right, now this is going to come in here. Bring all of this in. Okay, I think, I think we're okay on that one because it's going to get 
cold against, but I think this one needs to be shorter uh, because of how thick the fiber is. Still, all good. Just means we just kind of do a little trim. This is all part of every piece is different. Okay. Okay. All right. So we are going to slide all as much of this as we can under, which really wasn't much, huh? All right. So when we do this, I like to kind of work head on with this. Okay. Ah, uh, this is going to make it oh so much fun when we go to stitch through it. it should be okay okay now to take this and try to bring this edge over Quite sure why my glue gun decided to not want to grab that. Best way to see if you're getting it rolled over far enough is to look at it from this direction. And you can feel it. You can feel it against the board, right? You'll get it. You'll understand. All right. Okay. Okay. Now we're at this top part. How we're going to do this is we're going to start. Let's pull you over. Put you like that. Yes. And way down like that. Okay. E further down. Are we hitting gray here? Yes, we are. I'll make sure I have the extra up here. Okay, let's turn on our side. we do this side okay I want to make sure that that square is square against that bottom down there okay okay makes there we go okay
lift it up, and pull, 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 okay, pulling while it's hot, keep going, make sure everybody's sticking, if it doesn't, you can come back, and all you do is take your little piece of, your little, or you can even take your iron right above it and let it steam a little. I'm not touching this one with steam for obvious reasons that I've already discussed. Okay. Now, you're looking at this and going, oh my. No, it'll all come together when everything gets put together. Don't worry. It's all good. Okay, so now I want to make sure that this piece is right against on that corner. All right, yes, push it up, yes. Right. Now, our corner, that, yes, is square. So now, I'm going to bring it over here like that. There's square. This, sorry. Okay, I gotta put a little more there. And I'm gonna roll it like this from this side, pinch that down and pull it. Uh, Lots can be done with the binding stitch, too. Looks pretty even there. Sweet. Okay. I'm going to take a point here. I'm going to push it up on. Now, that looks like a pretty big piece of waste canvas. The nice thing about this is when you uh, put the fabric on and you do the binding stitch, I like to use, I tend to use uh, on my bricks uh, ultra suede because when you do the binding stitch it pulls the fabric and there's enough give in ultra suede to do that. Okay, so this will push out Mm, I hope, I hope, I hope this isn't too far over. Well, we'll see. If not, you're going to get to see uh, another trick that I use, which is the same trick I use up here if I have to cut something while it's already done. You'll see. Okay. Well, let's see if I can fit this. Yeah, it's going to be nice and tight, but yes, this is just what we want. And I'll tell you why, because this is what is going to make it so that it is nice and square. I'm looking for my board. Hold on. Trying to keep, ooh, sorry, everything very close by. Let's make sure there is no glue bits right here where we're about to steam. 
because that would be very bad. Here we go. So what we do is we roll this over. And we steam it. Okay. We roll this under. So that we roll this under Take this off the board. So it cools off. All right. So now I'm going to take this and slide it in there like that. I'm going to put this. Now, I am going to tack this on for a reason. But it's not going to stay there because I'm going to have to cut the peak. Okay. Okay, Ooh. and stick. Come on, stick. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'll work. Thank. <laughs> I wish I could be more positive with you guys, but you know, I'm flying by the seat of my pants 90% of the time myself. Here is why I have to do what I'm doing. Okay. Now, this is how we get the peak of our roof. Okay. Now this will angle down, that will angle down, okay. I should be able to just flip it. I am going to take it. This will go to there. Probably. Let's do, we're going to make everything on here a skosh tight for the reasons that we talked about. This. Okay. And that comes down. There, and I guess we could take the tiny ruler and check. And then it's pretty close. And then do the same. Do the same there, just a skosh under. 
be something like that. Yeah. Okay. Pretty close to that. I'm gonna follow my line a little bit more. Okay. Put that away. Okay. All right, let's get these cut. I am going to use my roller. Wow, that's a reflection that must be decided. Actually, I'm not both slightly, and we're just going to leave it how it is. Round. I'm going to take that pointed tip off. No. Taking a scrap piece, and I'm going to bevel this edge. This allows me to make cuts, knowing I'm not going to damage the other piece. We want it to go down and push against. We're pushing against this top side piece. I'm going to move this over, drop it right in between. But first, yes, yes. We pressed it down, but now we got to pull it right back up again. Okay, hold on. This requires two hands. Okay. Pressing down against the bottom. Okay. Now, not every piece will be quite as challenging as this, but you know, it's hard when you're working on a bigger piece. It's not always easy to have it on stretcher bars. Push that, push that right up, especially this corner bit. Okay. Okay, so that's one side set. Now another thing that's going to help us in a bit is we're gonna have a brick inside here and we're gonna have all kinds of foam in here and we're going to get this snug as a bug. Okay. I have to think about what I'm doing. I'm trying to grab every which way tool here. I'm gonna get this real low to the edge down here because whenever you, excuse me, I'm going to put it on my lap so I can pull this down. Okay. Okay. And when we do the binding stitch on this, it's all going to come together. Now, this is uh, kind of the moment where we put everything together and, oh, lo and behold, 
hold on. I gotta get this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put ah, the humbug. Going to put pin to show me how far I have to cut it back. Um, I do not think that this is this person's stitching. This is probably my design issue <laughs> because I like to make sure that they are. That there is plenty because nothing is worse than having not enough stitches. Okay. Now, what we're going to do in these corners is we'll be pulling that with the doll needle to make a better dart point. Right. And we're going to bring this here. And I'm thinking it's this line here. Because there's a right, maybe right behind it. So it pulls. Okay. All right. So actually, that pulled together really well across the front. Very happy with that. So now, what you do is you just take a little and you cut here just to cut the waste canvas and doll needle. Pull it up, okay, and we're going to go right across to here, and we go down needle, those ones that are rolling don't want to cut, so I'm going to start pulling, oh, it did, look at that. Fabulous. Oof. Got some fibers in there with glue on them. Okay. All right. So we're just going to cut these. Now we're going to come here and we're going to do the same thing. Do, do, do. Cross to. I'm going to guess. Don't guess. Have a roll up. I'm going to cut it back to there. Okay. okay. And that gets pulled up there. All right. Let's see. It's the correct size. You see nothing. You do not see me cutting things with my fabric scissors. Shush. I'm a habitual person for that. Okay, so we know we have to go back to there. I need to put that in my pin cushion so I do not start looking for it, cursing. Okay. Okay. Where's my pencil? Okay. I'll do this side. Actually, I have straight edge right there I could have used.
All right. This is why I hate matte board. Almost had it. Darn it. Okay, so in order to double check before we glue, I am going to. So, what you do is you fold it over like that. Okay, because you want to try to make sure that this seam isn't so ginormous because of all of this extra stitching. Hold on. I think I might have to do more. Is that? We fold it up like that. Fold it like that. All right, I'm going to pull the other one up, get the other one done. And I'm going to slide this in. And I don't want to just keep pushing down into that piece of mat board. I want to make sure because I do not want to go through it. Perfect. Okay. 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 There we go. All right. Let's see how this goes. Excuse my awkward camera work here. Of course, I grab one that has been goobered by glue after I just cleaned them. Let me bring. Ooh, sugar. Mm. I think that one has to be smaller. Okay, we're off. So I'm going to take another eight.
Okay. Taking out some of the bulk, this piece, that piece. Just going to tack it down. Again, that. Glue these down. Uh, I don't really care about that because it's all going to be interior anyway. All right, let's hope they meet up. This. Forgive me. Time to battle it on my lap. So what I'm doing is I'm dropping that thicker part behind. Okay. Trying to get that to autofocus again. There we go. Not always easy. Yeah. Okay. I know that looked really bad, but just watch. What we're going to do is make sure that these pieces are in there. And look at how smooth that looks. Yay, yay, yay. Ooh, I should have added a few more pins to that side. All 
I need my extra glasses on. I don't want that to pop off. There we go. See? Okay. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. There. Boop, boop, boop. They're fighting a little bit. But that's okay. That's okay. It'll work. Okay. So what we'll probably do is I will be um, if you crisscross your pins, uh, if you you have to, <laughs> or else they'll keep popping out if you push one way or the other way uh, when it's on a top seam like that. Actually, yeah. Okay. Okay. Where's my dolly? It's amazing how much I use this tool. So I'm going to push that. I'm actually going to get my butter knife and have it help me push in there. Okay. have the same thing going on here. So we push it in. Oop. A little bit of glue grab. Okay. And because I'm pushing on it, it's wanting to flare out a little bit. It'll look different once we get it stitched. It'll fit right on there tight. Okay. And I know the sides are going, uh, they're stressing out. But when we get a brick in there, nice and nice and tight. Very taut. And we'll have to push these back under. These are the darts that we had made earlier. Okay. But we're getting there. Okay. I want to do is before these are pins to this roof so it doesn't pop apart. Let the fun begin. We're going to start sewing the seams. Look at that. It looks so nice. Well, I'm biased. Um, piece and curved needle. Oof, still has a little bit of 
goop on it from the last ornament I did. Uh, for things that are straight edged like this little houses things it's easiest way to do it <laughs> sometimes people come in the studio and they don't know I am taping okay so uh, second set of glasses and we're gonna start okay, I gotta push this in a little so I can sit forward here need that anymore okay so I'm going to come up I'm gonna start from this side into the stitch there. Uh, it's very tenuous working in these tight corners um, because I don't want to shred the corner and don't particularly want to put more glue in it. to gather about four-ish stitches. Okay. I'm going to push this in as I bring it down to meet here. focus. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. It's pulling a little more than I wanted to. That's okay. I want to try to do as small a stitches as possible. Okay, I need a pin. Hold on. Uh, the centerpiece is pushing in, so I have to pin it so it stops pushing down in. Okay, so it stays in the line where I want it. Okay, just like that. Makes sewing a lot easier. I'd like to put the brick in there right now just so it is uh, nice and squared off down here. And it gets really heavy to push around, so I'll just wait on that. Mm.
course, the pin is right where I want to put my stitch. Or close to it. Makes it a little more difficult. I am now going to stick a pin this way in it. And why? Because this was pulling away. I don't want to have to constantly keep a real tight, 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 tight hold on this thread uh, fishing line. And it'll stop this from rebounding every time I am popping open and so we'll put a secure pin there okay. believe this is called a binding stitch we grab a little from this side in behind it Then you do the same thing on the opposite side. Little chunks, little chunks. Where? I know, it's right down on top of this and it's auto-focusing. I'm so sorry. Hold on a second. I'm going to push it up a little. Hopefully that'll help a little bit. Right. Gotta be careful how you go through these long stitches. Hold on a tick. Okay. See, like there. I don't want that stitch to pull like that. And that's not even a long stitch. Let's see if we can fix that. There you go. Also by trying to also trying to minimize the amount of C stitches that you can see the fishing line of. Did that just make sense? I think things in my head and then I go, wait a minute, I don't know that that sounded right.
Put a cinch in here. It's just a, it's not a knot. It's just an extra stitch to pull against. Oh my goodness. My hands are all sweaty. Okay. We're going to come. There. Perfect. Okay, hold on. Okay. Let's take this out, put it back here so it still has some support. There. Oh, I love fishing line.
I'm going to push this corner up a little to give it some support. Okay. Stitch. Sorry. Always pay attention to where your fishing line is because I've had it catch on these and not notice. And then I take the pin out and it's serious ugliness. Good, good, good. Sorry, my glasses just banged the camera. I'm just meandering my way back up to the center. Okay. Do it. I'm trying to get it to refocus. There we go.
apologize. It's just when it's something that is tall and it's, you know, it's like working on a pillow. Need certain angles to be able to get this curved needle to work <laughs> right in the end. Stop pushing on it or I'm going to end up with blood spurting out. Yep. Okay. First aid. Hold, please. Okay. Crisis averted. Didn't have to amputate my thumb. I'll live. One of the perils of sewing. Jeez. I'm not overly dramatic, am I? I'll live. Don't worry about me. That does not like all of that white at the camera. Now, if you ever do this and as you put your bricks in and all of that good stuff and put your, fill it with your styrofoam and you notice that you have some gapping, don't worry about it. You just come back, throw, ugh, I lose more pins that way. And just throw another row of stitches in and cinch it right up. You'll be fine. So these look pretty good so far. Look how lovely that is. Okay. 
Okay. Last one. And as with always, when I get my take, when I'm done dotting something, I take it back in a ways, pull it through so that there's a nice long tail on it so that knot does not give way. Okay? All right, let me go run and grab the brick. Okay, so we have a few parts down here that a little loose and need to be glued down. Okay. And let's see, good, bad, and the ugly, you get to see it all. needle extractor extraordinaire there okay Okay, so we'll take this and shoot a little glue down in there. Turn it under, glue it. Okay, and we're going to do the same here. Okay, now bring this brick in here. We want to make sure, oh, on thing. So this is just a little shy. So I wanna bring this over, tight to this side. And I want to make sure that this, because we know that's a 90 degree angle, hopefully, I want to make sure that we have um, a quarter of an inch piece space at the bottom at least. So our foam core can sit right there with just a little bit of overhang because we don't want our stitching to sit flat on the floor. So I'm gonna take this and just to kind of hold it for this for a minute, going to Put some hot glue in there. Okay. Now, ooh, look, a little cutty thing. That's almost the right size. Yeah, I just needed, there is, if you look, no, you see in there? There we go. Just a tiniest little gap. So we are going to put this into there. Mm. Let's 
scissors to cut some fabric. And goes like that. Right. Oops. I'm getting all kinds of glue stringers here. Okay. Now, it's really tight here at the brick where the waste canvas is, but we still have a little space to fill in there. And I'd say it's about, about long. Okay. Just gonna. That high. Okay. Nope, a little shorter. Because we really want that to push against it. So, yeah, look at that. Okay. Nice and stable now. Take you. Pull you tight. Doesn't take long um, against the lovely concrete. This is a standard concrete brick that I get at Home Depot. Um, all of my designs uh, that are brick covers, are, I use the measurements from this type of a brick, not a paver. Um, in, Pavers are really big, and I went through a time where not only were they big, they were expensive. And uh, so this is inexpensive, little concrete, nothing, and trying to find pavers all the time consistently just became too much. And there's a lot of old designs that use really small bricks. There's a few designs where I've literally had to chisel off to get a smaller brick. Okay. Now, I have to measure because every time it I know. Consistency, Kelly. Consistency. Not likely. So we have just under half. So I have to use two pieces of foam core in here to build it up. So uh, this is not even close to being done. We fill all of this with foam. Uh, we don't want somebody pushing their finger through it accidentally. We want something to fill the void. I do the same thing on all my um, stand-ups. Not everybody does that, but I do. Um, okay. So the next thing we have to do, I have to bring this camera way up like this, okay? We're gonna fill this void. I don't know if I can get it out of this, this bit. Styrofoam is expensive, so I would like to tr attempt to maximize. Oh, I can get it. Okay. This has Alright. Uh, so I'm going to trace around Kind of angling my pen in. Oh, sorry, my face hit it. Just don't want to. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Now, let me see. I have a lovely tool that I use for doing this. Yeah, it's okay. I need to just plug it in. I'm not sure I do this on a different table usually. Okay. Where it's not so crowded. Okay, so I'm going to kind of test it. Yep. Okay. Does not take long for this thing to heat up. So I'm just going to make it easier for us to control. This, high, this wire gets extremely hot. Use with caution, hands away, no children around. Whoa. I go further and I can't. There we go. <laughs> okay. Okay. I used to have a, a, uh, yeah, that. It stinks, by the way. Okay, you hold it flat, all right, bring it in, and just slowly push. Do not force it because that'll push the wire into the little sides. I'll show you in a second where I have many times scarred this because of what I have done. Okay. See the little burn marks on each side? I'll go closer in a minute. Oof, dee, that smells so bad. Um, and this does do the 90 degree, at least it looks like it does, close enough for what I'm doing here. I'm just filling. It's not like it's a finished edge. Now, the likelihood that I will have to um, do this again pretty good because I did not take any off. I should have taken a quarter, maybe an eighth of an inch because we traced around it, you know. Oh, oh I'm all over the place. Okay. So I'm going to take this, put it to the side, bring this back over, see how much needs to be gotten rid of. Yeah, I need to just chop that little point off. And come off. Okay, calm down. All right. Um, personally, I put this thing in there because for some reason it's not a very expensive one. <laughs> there are better ones out there. There. But. I put a little piece of foam in there so it makes the wire taut. The uh, arm of this kind of angles down a little. Um, all you have to do is kind of just pass it by it and it will uh, melt some of it off. I gotta take about 
I'd rather cut off a little more and have to wedge in some pieces of foam core if I have to than to constantly keep coming back and doing this. You can also literally push this and it'll go in. All right, let's see how we did. I'm gonna bring this back here. Okay. Dang, that's that's pretty good. Now I, I want to show you that we have a little gapping here. I don't want any hands to pick this up and have it give. So I am going to first shut this off, unplug it, and set it to the side. Got to tell you, the thing kind of freaks me out in the respect of how efficient it is at burning through things so easily. Uh, Okay, so right. I'm going to cut it here. And I'm going to I've got to look at it straight on. What do I got going on? Oh, 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 okay. So the waste canvas in there. Makes it kind of okay. I just need it a little thinner. Wow, a lot thinner. Dang. about an inch worth. Ah. Imperfections are so wonderful. Shimming it and shimming it. Yeah. Okay. I need one more. Could have just used a piece of freaking foam core. Ah. Oh, well. Okay. There you go. Okay. Now this side needs one. More than one. Poppin' song, shim shimmery, shim shimmery? Nah. Okay. That's pretty good. Now, the next thing. No, it's 
it's got to be pulled for. Let me see here. Okay, that's pretty good. We're going to do the same thing because we've got about a quarter inch gap there to make it level with the brick. Okay. So this is going to be really quite rough. Okay, okay. Just flip it over. Be good. Problem is, where's the brick end? Just above that wall, just above this one. Okay. Oh. Um, because this doesn't have to be a perfect piece, it's just a spacer wedge piece, we want to make it smaller. Yes, my table is getting messy, 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 messy. If you could see more off camera, which don't want you to because it's like a little cockpit where I have everything kind of around me that I can grab. It's a disaster. Off, off, off. Yes, yes. Wouldn't it be easier to just throw it in the trash can? No. Let the cleaning elves take care of it. <laughs> that would be me, by the way. Wow, that was really off. Oh yeah, I even made it smaller. What the heck? Okay, you go. I'm not messing about with that. Let it sit in there. Beautiful. Done is beautiful. Not much, just enough to have it stick so the next time I have to flip this over again to make a full length, two full length ones of these. Well, one. And then the final one we have to be very precise on. Okay. Okay. Oh, there's my lamp. I'll raise that up a little. Okay. So, next thing we have to do is another spacer. So we have to have this back against something because we don't want to push in on it and have it be the back of it dent in and since this is maybe I'm gonna go just below where the brick oops where the brick is okay it's like a quarter inch I'm gonna pull that way over don't want the pencil. No pencil lead. Now we're going to mark up this side. And this side. Okay. There we go. This side has a lot of room. Okay. This side we're just gonna come in. Let's see how we do. Because I really like to not have a ton of space. 
now uh, because of our seams at the tip top. This could be a little problematic. All right, let's try it. I have pins flying everywhere, bone claws flying everywhere. Oh my goodness. All right. Okay. <sighs> yes, I have a grand time finishing. Yeah, look at that. Pretty dang good. Pretty happy with that. This will be pulled in more. Okay. Now, these feel like they're bowing out a little bit. Don't worry, they won't. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Now comes the final foam core piece, I think. Let's measure before we get too excited. Oh dear, 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 dear. It is not the final. Ah, all right. Out. And where is it? Let me take you. Let me take you. This. Here we go. Like okay. no. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to buy a full sheet of mat board, you can always buy uh, scrap packs. They usually have those in most framing places um, or just go in and I think Michael's has some too. time we're going to be tracing this out so we want to be very <laughs> that would have been bad I would have not been happy But 
mystery edge here. Okay. Yep, make that the straight edge. It's going to bevel in like this. Oh, I can see the tip of the cut. All right, so, sorry. I bevel it, so I want this to be the bevel inside. So I'm going to line it up. That's going to be straight side. Okay. I'm going to have them pulling in over here. Ugh. <sighs> I can tell it's been a long day. Like this. Because the back could be a little different from the front, Kelly. Let's bring it down here. There. Okay. Now we're going to mark off okay. where this ends. Holding a little because it's not flat, straight, and Okay, so this needs to be straightened out when we do this because we want the roof line to be straight like it was on the front. So using this, it's not a quarter inch in, it's about an eighth. bows out here at the end. No? Okay.
I'm going to straighten this by going like that. Now, I know the back of this has those seams that are coming together. So I am going to round it off because I know it's not. Now this, this could totally not fit, just saying. And then we try again. I will not uh, make you watch. Played in. Okay. One of the reasons it could potentially not fit. have to do it from the back. And if we bevel it, when we flip this, if we didn't cut it really parallel, it'd be quite wonky. Double check. Oh, I should have cut that off. Hi. But do, 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 do. Okay. Stupid. And be very careful with the. Ah, yeah. Dang it. My blade caught into my ruler. Here's hoping. Gonna take about right, first thing we're gonna do 
Next, we need to bevel the sides. Do you see the way that I'm holding this? Or I have it between my pinky and my ring? It is because it basically puts your hand in just the right position to be able to do this 45 degree angle. Well, or this angle, not exactly 45, obviously. If I want exact, I gotta use a mat cutter or something. Now, I saw that this peak is too high. All right. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Nice, nice, nice. We can push this in. Okay, we'll pin it right together. And the way we do the fabric, once the fabric's on, it's gonna fill in gapping as well. But the one thing that's gotta be done, I'm gonna chop some off the bottom. This, I am gonna use my pencil. Sorry if my head was just in the camera. Okay. Okay, okay. All right, I can use my. Started setting everything everywhere to get it out of the way and <laughs> can't find it. Okay. Just mess that up. All right. To there. Down there. Mm. You can take a little off of this end. All right, I'm gonna make sure that this is, nothing comes up there. Yeah. Take that, square it off. Must have had a little travel with my ruler. This gets beveled too because the bottom piece is going to fit right up in there. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. All right, so here's the thing. When you put material on, it's gonna have waste material that gets folded under. So it is going to lift it up just to skosh. So that's good, because we don't want this to be down below and have this recessed, okay? All right, let's get that fabric on here. Let's see. 
this way and then this way this way and then no that way so I'm going to see how we can fit it this little piece gonna work at the bottom I think so definitely think so So this uh, is not a true ultra suede. It is a faux ultra suede, but it's the right color, and so we're going to use it. it. Still behaves the same way, but I do use the fusible interfacing on it uh, to give it a little more body because it is quite thin. Okay, chompy scissors. Jump. Dirt. I do not want that extra bead of thicker glue there. I don't want it raised up any more than possible. Okay. Push kind of against it, make sure that's nice and tight. Start notching here. That's stopped. It did. Because I cannot have that band aid on there. It's about to pop off. Okay. Just going to put darts here. Now, this is the way I do it does not mean that this is the right way or wrong way. It is the way I do it. It's the way that makes sense to me. But if there are any little tricks that you like, probably fast forwarding right through this part anyway. <laughs> okay. 
Do not like to get it on the phone, the actual phone part, if I can help it. Dang it. I also don't want to pull it so far that it buckles the other side. And the reason that is, is because it kind of melts in and it takes away this nice heavy side. Whoop. Some of that right like that. Push it right on. No worries there. It looks pretty good so far. Okay, I have to check something. Okay, I have another video that I'm uploading and don't want it to all of a sudden, as soon as it's done, <laughs> done exporting, it starts to automatically play it. So then it would play it or mess this video up and I don't want that. Okay. Spiderweb, spiderweb, spiderwebs. Now. Right. There. Right. Pin time. Side. Now, um, one thing I like to do when it gets to this point, because I spin it a lot, just in case my self-healing mat has any catchy spots on it, don't want to take a chance that it catches and pulls anything. Okay, we're good there, we're good there. Right. Start by pinning. Now, there are a few spots where I can see a little waste case, but never fear. That is where this lovely fabric helps us. The other thing you can do is you can take your pin, you're putting it in, and you can bend your stitches a little bit like that. I will. Bring it closer so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, see how we can kind of, well, I can see that there's a little waste canvas in there. See it? Yeah, you can see it. And no, I do not glue the top part because in the past when I have done that, like glued it to all the core pieces, if all of the glue does not hit 
the area you want it to hit. Sometimes when you grab it, it makes this crackly noise, like a sticky noise, back and forth and back and forth. Very bad. <laughs> it's, it's very disheartening. <laughs> it's like, no, what do you mean you didn't all stick to something? Okay, so we're gonna, so we put this little piece of mat board under there to keep the stitches up off of any potential bad spots. All right. Oop, nubbin. The tiny pins have their place. This is not it. Not it. Bricks kind of hanging off the end there. Pulling this in. Oop, that's got glue on it. Okay. Doesn't quite meet our point, but gonna call it a win. Now, let us discuss the gap. Look at that. No gap. So I overfilled it with, um, with the board because I do not want this to bend when somebody picks it up. Um, it needs to feel solid. It needs to feel substantial. I mean, do you want to feel like when you pick it up that it's going to break? Or that it wasn't done quite right? I don't think so. I think you all want something that will last the best that you can. Okay, now here we have the bottom. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I don't sew this and then sew this. I measure this out, I cover it in fabric, I make it fit, and then I do all my sewing at once. Okay. Now I will say this, there have been times where I have done something not exactly 90 degrees and it's a little bigger at the top, seven and three quarters, seven and three quarters. Thank goodness, because that could have been slightly embarrassing. Two and three quarters, two and three quarters, cool. What did I say? Seven and three quarters? Oh, I have no short-term memory. Actually, I'm going from there to there. It's seven eighths. Do I have seven eighths down here? Not quite. So you know what we got to do? You guessed it. We'll make it work. All right. So seven and three quarters. Five, 
two and three quarters. Oh, my phone core. Back up you go. Now, because I've been chopping all over this thing, I am going to put a new Look straight. Oh, we gotta scooch it over. That's on a line already. Okay, I don't know if you guys ever watched Project Runway, but I used to watch it all the time when I was finishing. And I just loved Tin Gun when he would say, it's a make it work moment. I do that all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go halfway between, I'm just going to go just above the seven and three quarters. Hmm. That's interesting. This is not straight. Well, at least this is. So we're gonna make we're gonna go down here to eight. And we're going to cut this here. Get rid of that. And two and three quarters. I'm gonna make that just shy. And I'm going to make sure that it's a square. <laughs> oh, goodness. And we will find out very quickly if it isn't gonna work. Sorry about the reflection. Oops. Seven. I like the little lines that are there. They're a little easier to see than the big dark ones. Alright. Alright, we're straight there. Look straight there. Like this. Before we get it. Gonna bevel, bevel, bevel. Level, level, level. I know, I probably make you crazy with the beveling. But when you're making a box, it's important. You're really going to hate it when I make card boxes. Because I do it all the time in there. They're all wolves. You know, I literally do that on everything. I do. I think. Pretty much. Okay. Now, I know that the corners on the bottom of this are kind of rounded. Right? Right. So. We're going to round those out a little. And I am not even doing it on camera, am I? My apologies. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Pretty dang nice. All right. So now my question is, I want to make sure that this sits flat in here. I think this is it's not as turned over as the other pieces. 
Okay, hold on. I gotta go back up again. So, I have too much waste canvas there, so I'm gonna take this and I'm folding it over and I'm folding it over. Okay, because we want this to sit flat, and I do not want this to uh, rub because it is higher. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Try again. I'm still working on it. Don't worry. So I'm putting my needle in the top and I'm literally pulling this over. Okay, because putting it in like this and I'm bending it over because I did not get that turned correctly at the bottom. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Okay. And then a little smooth. All right, let's hope we didn't just make it so it's too tight. No, 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 we're good. All right. Okay, I am going to do a piece of mat board underneath this because I want it lifted up and I can tell that it is going to hit this stitching. That stitching is going to end up on touching the floor. I do not want that. Okay. There. There. I am not a taskmaster to a ruler, if you can't tell. Okay, so I am going to put this on like so. Then I'm going to grab this and excellent, excellent, excellent. I can take that bevel and can I, I can push it down once I get the cloth on. Yes, 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 yes. Is it too high now? It's kind of too high now. Mm. All right. I gotta put the fabric on it. You know why? Waste can the waste fabric is going to make it thicker. It's gonna bring it up. I just have to do that before I keep flitzing around with it. And if I have to put a thin little piece of cardboard in it, then I will. Alright, so we said this is the smooth direction I want it to be. That okay. okay. Hold on a second. Okay. Wow, those those videos really take a long time to export. All right. have to put I cut it a little too close so I'm gonna have to put some glue down on that styrofoam I can tell 
I am just really happy that there are no uh, pucker marks. Oh, dang it. I should have told you what to do on that. All right, give me a minute. I'll do that at the end. Pucker mark info. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. So come right along here. Mm. I can tell that's definitely acid free because it didn't melt. All right. I've got spider webs all over my hands. Okay. Let's check it out. Perfection. Now, I'm still going to bevel some of these edges down. popping up just a skosh because of uh oop. that sign all right all right i break the rule on this side i glue it Uh, 
on the bottom, I glue it. Now, just turn it over and sit it on it. Let the weight of the brick get it down there really good. Okay. All right, so the last thing is to stitch it all the way around. And then you got to de it it from, I'm sorry, that's a word I made up a long time ago with my daughters for all the tiny little pieces of waste canvas and little dart triangles that I used to trail through the house. So my little tiny bits are called schnibblets. I apologize as well. I make up a lot of words along the way. And just from different stuff. I don't know. I'm sure you'll hear them as you watch many of them. Okay. I kind of don't need because I did that. Let's just make sure that the front is. Well, I think what I'm going to do is right. Ugh, all these spiders. Well, it's not, you know, hot glue spiders. Okay. And then I'm going to just grab this like this. Pull it down in a little. Okay, oof. Silly thing. Pull it back a little more so you can see what I'm doing. You can literally, when the sun starts hitting through my shades, you know. If it's summertime, it is about six o'clock almost. I'm going to take this, I'm going to go up, pull that out, put that in, pull my pin up. Okay. Now it will all come together when we sew it. But let's make our lives easy. Have it held there kind of while we're doing it. Pull it out there. Pull it up here. There. Okay. Do this. Oh, did you hear that? I heard it. Sounded like something was crackling. There. Mm, nope. I need but a knife. Oh dear. Never thought that epoxy would give way. I'll needle to the rescue. Okay. Grab this. Go up. Ay, ay, ay. Come on. There. I want that row to be the same. So we're going to kind of push. Pull this in. Okay. We'll get it. Okay. And it'll all be nice and tight. Okay. Oof. 
I usually do the sides, but I think I'm going to do the bottom. Because I want to be able to spin it around on the tabletop. I think. Let's bring it up here a little bit. Okay. That another knot. All right. So if I go this way and around, no. Well, we'll see if I have enough thread to do that. I'm just worry about the bottom for now. Another glue stick ready for just in case. Okay. <clears throat> to start. See, the last one I did, I went this way around. I shouldn't have done that. Hmm. Interesting. Excuse me. Okay. Thumb. Guard. Extra glasses. Oh, hit the camera. Not what I planned on doing. Okay, this is resting on my chair. It's quite the large piece. I'm going to start here. And the reason I want to grab into this material, okay? Gotta be careful these long stitches here. Because then if I grab oop thread, I'm caught on the pin on the side. If I grab it, it's gonna pull it over. Okay, and it's gonna fill any gaps as we go. That is a piece of schniblet. Oh yeah, get in there then. I'm not gonna come out. Get back in there. I sincerely hope you're fast forwarding. Oh, you can't even see. Doing my best to get you a good angle, but it's not easy. My hand's always in the way. Okay, I gotta move my chair some so that I can sit this out further away from me. Okay. 
That's glue. And that's glue. Woofty. Glue, glue. <clears throat> Just going to leave those pins in. Okay. I'm going to press it with my hand so I can keep grabbing it and keeping that stitch line up. Come on, focus. And they're very annoying. I apologize if you do as well. Taking you out, you're in my way. Hands are getting tired. I'm going to come back. I'm going to kind of manipulate those 
spots. We turn too far. I turned too far. <laughs> okay. I gotta take you out. At this point, you can take those out. Glue. Oh, the glue. It's the glue. Ah. Very glad I didn't just stab myself again. Come on, refocus. Ugh. What a pain. wanting to focus on the floor. I know, I know. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I just snagged a stitch. So basically, it's going to push it back in at the end of our needle. Okay. Seriously, hope you're fast forward. Boring, boring, boring.
โอ้Hands are getting sweaty, so it doesn't want to grip the needle anymore. And this has lots of blue on it. Off camera, sorry. It's kind of a pain how this this auto focus. Come on, there we go.
I'm going to knot it here. Now, nice little tail. <clears throat> and I drop my needle. Pull that knot until it comes invisible. Okay, gotta grab my needle off the floor. Uh, oh, actually, I have two sides left to go. Uh, I'm gonna. Do I have another? Mm, somewhere I had another one. This one's getting awful sticky. Alright, so come in here. Needle up there. All that knot goes inside. Spin it around. I'm going to push this bit of thread over the top of the knot from the last one. Okay. Take that out for a minute. And there we go. I'm gonna put that right back in there. And make sure that that's nice and tight to it. Grr. See if I can work through this. Uh, ow, ow, ow. Oh, 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 just smacked my finger. Okay, won't use that kind again. Grab. Move you back to there. Of course, I just put it in the way of my curved needle. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's enough of that. Bashing my hand twice, seriously? Alright. All set. So 
So that move right there, the pulling, is why I have arthritis in my thumb. That motion right there. Look at that, my knuckles are all red from smacking on them on the table. Very graceful. And the joke is, bruise really easily. <laughs> so I call myself a peach. Kids will get messing around and get a little too exuberant. Like, don't grab me like that. I'm a peach. I'm gonna bruise. Which, of course, it, that just backfires because they just do it to me even more. They think they're so funny. Yeah, I'm going to take it on that side of that long. I don't know if you can see it with that silly sunlight. Oh, beautiful, beautiful sunlight. Because, let me tell you, on the Cape, we have plenty of gray days. <laughs> okay. Please forgive me. I gotta turn because I'm not whamming my hand on the table again. Going. The pin out. You can see that's kind of gapping, so I'm going to put the pin back in so I'm not fighting it. I can keep pulling my push my bevel a little there, see if it'll give way. Ah, that's fine. That's fine. That'll work. Look at that. Going to be heating pad and ibuprofen tonight.
rubber gripper keeps wanting to slip off of that. It's annoying. It's starting to get to me. But my thumb's screaming at me already, so I'm just going to... Oops, here we go. I don't think you want to see all that disgusting stuff on the floor, do you? Nah. Getting pretty close to the end. Yay! I can't wait. And I apologize if you are not fast forwarding and you're listening to me ramble as I work. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> oh, seriously, Kelly. Ugh. You know better. You know better. Come on. Hold on, refocus. You know, because I'm using like cheaters over progressive lenses to get everything bigger. Turning, sorry. Uh, can't always tell when that computer screen is blurry, so. Wow. Not quite sure why I'm having such a hard time. Actually, I'm lying. I do know why. Put quite a bit of glue on these sides, didn't I? For necessity. But dang, if it didn't turn out gorgeous. I love it when a plan comes together. This is a beautiful piece. I want to make sure that it is everything she wants it to be. Ugh. Okay, right here, I'm going to do a knot, so I want that side to stay nice and tight. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to do one more. Okay. Look at that. All right. Can get rid of all these strippy minions. Now, I am going to do a little something, I think. It's these while I'm here. I'm going to kind of pull them. Make sure everybody's laying nice and straight. Yes. Okay. Okay. Back to the bottom, guys. Let's see. If I want to just... Yes. That is exactly just what I want to do. Okay. I'm going to bring this. I'm going to grab 
this fabric. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was, thought that I had, oh please, I really hope that I didn't muff that up and it wasn't recording for a while. Oh. Well, you wouldn't have missed much because I was just sewing. Just sewing my way around. Around and around. Maybe you missed seeing me smack my hand. Come on, focus. Refocus. Refocus. Please. Wow, gray fabric, very exciting. Okay, and now we're just going to stitch these two together. Okay. Okay, I'll make sure that all of this hold in, yep, yep, yep. That bevel is pushed down a little. Okay. All right. I really do love even faux ultra suede. How it just pulls together so nicely. Not that you can't do it with other things, it's not. It's just something that I enjoy about this fabric. And how, yeah. It just kind of is sort of seamless. But I do have to keep going back over and pushing it because as I'm putting my needle in, it's kind of moving and leaving a little gap and really it just needs to be worked. So I'll do that after so that you can see maybe a little bit better. Oh, we are so close to done. Come on. I do not know why it does this. Other than it likes to annoy me. There we go. Okay. And then here. Grab kind of deep. What it does is it bends up the foam core, which is just giving a little push, disappears. Ah, the bevel. Now, 
if you would like to book courting on it, go for it. Um, I don't, I don't put any courting on these. I don't think it needs it. We get the seams really tight. We hide our stitches pretty much for the most part. I can't say I do it. Oh man, my pinky is killing me. I know, my pinky, why? Because I'm pulling against it all the time, I think. Well, and a few years ago, I had an incident with it. I tore a bunch of ligaments in it. It was really embarrassing. It was all because I didn't want to burn toast. Kind of counting on you not listening to it and fast forwarding. But I spill my guts when I think you're fast forwarding. It's of no sewing interest. It's just little factoids about myself. Ugh, so close. And the last one, I'm going to have to. I don't want to hit my hand again, though. Oof. See? All those little bits. When you put that curved needle in and it kind of bends it up, you must bend it back. Thank goodness the bevel is forgiving. <laughs> uh, you're going to be so sick of the bevel. Here is our final piece of our stand-up. Oh, I should have put it on a piece of stuff so it slide easier. But it's got a brick in it, so it doesn't slide so easy. Oh, piece of schmutz. Okay. All nice and together. Look at that. How lovely wonderful job. Oh, silly sunlight there. I just can't get away from it. Oh well. Well, there you go. That is how I do my stand-ups. Doesn't matter what kind it is. The only thing that changes is if there are major curves in it. And that, I kind of show that technique um, in the lobster trap on how I cut the foam core or the other stuff to make it arch uh, mat board all right good luck i know you can do it